Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Today for our roundtable, we have special guest Corey Hawkins, one of the stars of the upcoming Apple Plus film, The Tragedy of Macbeth. We're going to kick things off by introducing you to the African members who are on the call today, starting with our facilitator, Katia Woods in Philadelphia, Carolyn Hines in Toronto, Rhonda Rasha Penrice in Atlanta, Nancy Green in Baltimore, Dana Abercrombie in New York, and Jill Monroe in Los Angeles. Man, you're getting love from all over the country. All over the place. This is great, man. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> I'm going to let you ladies do what you do so well, and I will see you on the other side. Um, Kathia Woods, Cup of Soul Show. Hello, Corey. I have Hello. to say, I, was, I really like this. I enjoyed this rendition of Macbeth. Bless Joel for giving it us to, in less than two hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bless the God. I know you come from theater, so talk about what it was like for you to flex that muscle again <laughs> and to get to do it with Denzel, you know? Uh, yeah, so I um, <clears throat> I came up in the theater. I grew up in, in uh, just sort of, I wouldn't say grew up doing theater. I used to sing, you know, years ago in, in church and all of that stuff, but, but when I got to high school in DC, um, I just fell in love with, with theater, but I was never really exposed in a way, I would say to like Shakespeare and other classics. Um, it's interesting because I went to pretty much an all black high school. And so classics for us was just the sort of redefinition of what classics are. So, you know, it was Baldwin and, and Hansberry and, um, and, and Richard Wesley and, and all of those, those were the classics for us. And yes, we studied Shakespeare, but but um, I, it wasn't until I got to Juilliard that I was really exposed to it. And I got the opportunity to play Macbeth in uh, a production. Actually, Daniel Brooks, uh, who y'all may know as well, was in my class. Um, and she played uh, <laughs> the role that Catherine Hunter plays, the witches, uh, in, in that production in school. And so um, to be able to now, <laughs> to be able to now, you know, have be able to play a role, which I think is sometimes um, um, thankless, uh, but but well, not thankless. Um, he does take out Macbeth, but um, to be able to bring Macduff to life uh, on screen and and to do it opposite, you know, Denzel is is uh, <laughs> it's an honor, and I'm I'm just stoked that I got the you know to work with with Joel, and he's the he's a creative genius, and. Um, a lot of pressure, but but it was but I feel like we got it done. Really enjoyed it, and I love that you got to do it wearing a fro. So that's always nice. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> we push for that. Jill <laughs> Monroe, YouTube Stiletto Jill. Great to talk to you today, Corey. Hey, so with Macbeth, we deal with themes of ambition, power, regret, which are all things as far as American politics we've seen over the past couple of years um, in subject matter. How do yeah. you think younger audiences will connect with this story? Because as you said, at a time when growing up, Shakespeare isn't something that most are familiar with outside of Romeo and Juliet, but the story is so universal. So how do you think that they'll respond to this rendition? It is universal. It, it, it's, it's one of those things that, um, and I, I've said this before, but for me, my entree into, into Shakespeare was, was language, right? Like I'm, I, and, and not everybody, you know, can get behind that. Um, not everybody sort of understands it, but the way I was able to sort of put it together was, you know, for me, Shakespeare was a poet, obviously, but he was a poet of the streets, you know? And so it was, um, I look at it in the same way I look at our, uh, our heroes, our lyrical geniuses, our, you know, um, you know, everyone from from most deaf to to Snoop and our, our, you know, to to Dre and N.W.A. and what they were talking about um, back in the day. They were poets of their streets, and and you might not be able to understand every piece of lyricism and you know every spin and alliteration and the assonance and all of that kind of stuff, but all of that had plays into what the images that they're conjuring up and, and the feeling that you that you get when you hear a song. And so I equate that same thing to Shakespeare. Um, he was talking about all of these themes of ambition and murder and and um, fate and, and what is destiny and all of that kind of stuff, 
you know, and he put it into this, this, what, you know, you could, you call it poetry, but this play um, that we now adapt, have, have adapted into film and has been adapted many times in the film. Um, and, 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 the, and the, it's still the same, you know, I play Macduff and Macduff is a man who um, loses his family, his wife, his kids, they are murdered by Macbeth, somebody who he looks up to somebody, you know, who he hopes to maybe emulate or be one day. And you experience that loss in a year where we're going through loss, you experience, um, you know, what it is when unchecked, what, what is unchecked power, you know, and we don't even have to get into all of that, because we know what that is, we just came out of a lot of it. But um, that's what, you know, the, the simple version of that is that art imitates life, right? But to be able to, um, to bring that to screen uh, with one of our modern day heroes, Denzel Washington, you know, embodying all of that, um, a complex character. Is he, is he as evil as, you know, and what drives him there? Um, it's always fun to, to watch, you know, a master get in there and, and, and play with those themes. And it's always just dope to be able to go along for the ride opposite him on screen, you know, in rehearsals. And so, 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 um, yeah, yeah. I think, I think modern audiences will, can bring themselves to it in, in whatever way, you know, whatever you pick up on, I think, Jill. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Corey, Carolyn Forrester. Here's what happened in Karen and Toss podcast. Um, thank you so much for talking with us today. Um, I love this film. <laughs> And I love it. One of the main things I love about it is that I, to me, it looks like everyone is having so much fun eating through every line of dialogue and every action on screen. Um, can you just talk about bringing that energy to the performance? Because as you said, Duff is his, his story is tragic because he loses his wife, he loses his family. But as a performer, you are able to just have fun with this. And one of the scenes that I really enjoy is the fight on the battlements where it's a confined space, but you have this long broadsword and you're yeah. fighting, you're really letting out all your anger and frustration and grief. So can you just talk about bringing all of that fun and energy into a tragic story and portraying it in such a, um, I think in such a visceral way in this fight sequence? Yeah, um, I'll just say the whole time I was just thinking, please don't be the one to hit Denzel upside the head with, with, a, with a broadsword. I was like, Lord Jesus, if I can just just get through this without messing up. Um, uh, we, we, <laughs> we had a lot of fun um, actually beating through the thing. The, br the brilliance of, uh, of, of Joel Cohen is that Joel is, um, he, he, everything is storyboarded. Everything is well executed, planned in advance. Um, and then you, it, it allows you to get there on the day and, and fly. You know, you can get there and then all of a sudden, if you feel something or this impulse, you can just sort of change it up. And, uh, you know, went through it with the stunt guys, the stunt team, incredible stunt team who Joel's been working with for, for years as well. And we just got up there and, and, uh, and played. And, and, and it's interesting because we beat, we beat it, beat it, beat, beat through the fight um like almost in the same way that uh um you that you beat through a script right or you beat through a scene like what what are they you you have this this confine of the parapet up there and so that changes the whole dynamic of these guys with these huge broadswords it isn't all swashbuckler sort of stuff it's messy it's it's, it's messy and it, almost as messy as as the themes of this movie uh, almost as messy as their relationship you know uh Macbeth and Macduff and so um, it was just, it was incredible. Um, and, and Denzel showed up like a pro that he is. And, and we just went to town. Um, at this point in, in, the, in the film, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, there's no more time for, for um, you know, he puts on the manly visage as, he, as they tell him to do early on. At this point, it's, it's you know, it, it's down to business. This is what's going to happen. It's, this is fate. This is inevitable. Um, he gives him an opportunity to surrender. And I think that's what's really key about that scene is through all of that, even think about it now, through all of that, this man killed his wife, his kids, all of his legacy is gone. And the morality in Macduff to sit there and say, if you surrender now, I don't have to kill you. That, that takes a lot. That takes a, a huge amount for somebody to do and Macbeth still says, you know, I'm not going to surrender before young Malcolm's feet. You know, it's not really about you, Macduff. It's I'm not going to surrender 
to that boy, that 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 person who we should call a leader. So, and then you just, and then we jump into it and the fight is, uh, you know, that all the way up until, you know, spoiler alert, uh, Macduff kills uh, Macbeth. Great, thank you so much. Thanks, Carol. Hi, uh, Nancy Green with Film Critique. And actually my, one of my questions was about that fight. Um, when I was watching you guys, I, it reminded me of, the fight scene in Terminator 2 between Robert Patrick and Arnold Schwarzenegger, because yeah. you know you have you have these two um, characters going at it like that. And I wanted to know for you, like how did you prepare for this, and and what, like if you can go a bit more into what that was like, like you're mm -hmm. fighting Denzel Washington, <laughs> you know, um, in this in this role. And so I I would really love to hear a bit more about that. Yeah, it was um it was a uh, it the, you know for we we rehearsed just with the text and the script for weeks um in and, and i was rehearsing with them before other cast members came in uh and you know that rehearsal process we can talk about later but but the actual choreography of it um it is you are dealing with again confines you know you're working in this sort of sandbox and again, the physicality, like there were things that I naturally wanted to do um, that as we were beaten through the fight, you know, that the, the, the actual movements that the swords are huge swords and they're not, they're blunt, but they're not, you know, they, if you get hit by them, they will mess you up. You know, they, we, we can't play with rubber swords because, you know, it, it just doesn't look right. You know, so a lot, it was just precision, 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 precision. And, and um, you have to be precise in those moments because then it allows freedom for you to, you know, find moments to still connect the act, the acting beats. Even if you even if you take a, a look at the all the way up until that last moment, you know, it isn't until his hubris, it isn't until his pride gets in the way. That's when he loses his head, both literally and phys fig figuratively, I, which I think is is again incredible storytelling incredible you know and that came out of the conversations of you know the reason why you know he goes in the middle of a fight in the middle of a fight for your life everything is crumbling down around you a crown falls off your head and you you turn around to go pick it up that and that is the reason why as soon as he puts that thing back on his head it's misplaced and 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 the sword, you know what I mean? And I think it's just so it's shocking, but it's also just so cool and so well done. Um, um, but again, it's storytelling, it's precision. And um, you know, it he 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 put uh Joe put all of these um uh obstacles sort of in our way to sort of jump around and fight. I mean, it just makes it more interesting. Uh and yeah, Denzel, I mean. He's just the man. Like that's just my dude. Like you know what I mean. Like to be. I mean, just the the idea that I'm standing there on a, you know. And, and again, all of this was built inside. All of the scenes in this film were all filmed into inside. So you know, we're sitting there in this huge, you know, on this parapet, and I'm literally sword fight. I mean, it's a kid's dream. Like we're you know we're sword fighting and costumes, wearing our froze and our natural hair, and like you know just just up there doing it. Two black men too, which I think is a is an incredible is incredible imagery because I mean also dealing with Shakespeare and, and how often do we see do we see that? You know how often does a young kid get to to turn on you know or go to the theater uh, or turn on Apple and, and see you know these black men speaking this text and, and, and then, you know, uh, one represents good, one represents evil in, in this battle between morality and all of the complexity of who we are. I just thought that was dope too. Yeah. And one of them yes. happens to be Denzel Washington, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> nice. Yes, it, it was, it was, it was fantastic. I love the production, everything, the way it was done. It was, it was so good. It was like very engaging. So, thank you. Thank Nick. you. Thank you. Thank you. The Abercrombie, the coalition, I love this um, very much with all my heart. What I love is the yin and a yang to each other for both Macduff and Macbeth. I was wondering either during the rehearsal process or even just in conversation, um, there was a lot about how you're both of your how your realities are vastly different and your thought process 
are vastly different, especially when it comes to what it takes to be a man and the ethical approach to everything. Can you mm -hmm. talk about the diving into the text? I don't know, was it a collaborative effort and how you approach that yin and yangness? Oh, yeah. Um, that's a great question. I, uh, that for me was the whole one of the whole, you know, was a huge reason why I just love the, uh, the idea of taking on this role. Um, uh, the yin and yang, right? Like we are, we are not a monolith. We could, I, I think that, um, you know, I say that Macbeth and Macduff are two sides of the same coin and, and Macduff can easily and who knows, could this, you know, when you look, if you look, you know, if there was a sequel, if Shakespeare wrote a sequel, what happens to Macduff now that he doesn't have children, he doesn't have a legacy. Now that he, you know, this man who is, is built uh, on with this incredible moral compass. In the scene in, in the forest where he finds out that he loses his family, um, the scene can be, you know, usually done with a bunch of bluster and rage and and fire and 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 that is all equally valid and 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 in 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 finding out this sort of this information but for me it was I, I looked at the text and we looked at the text and it was like this man is sitting there trying not to face reality trying not to um admit to the reality that the man who he looks up to and Denzel and I talked about this too just in terms of like you know his career and and me looking up to him and and him being a mentor and the the to imagine the unimaginable the unthinkable the fact that he has to ask Ross over and over my wife my wife my my chickens all of my chickens he says yes but my wife, they kill my, you know what I mean? Like, like he's not willing to, to go there. He doesn't want to go there. And um, because he can't imagine that somebody would do something like that. There's a scene in right before he finds out this news where he's walking in the forest with Malcolm. And it's usually sometimes cut out of the play. Sometimes it isn't, but he goes and he's trying to find out if Malcolm played by Harry Melling is, uh, is fit enough to lead his country. That's why he leaves. He makes a sacrifice to leave his family to go and and ask and find out if this king is is fit to lead. And he and and he finds out that you know uh, Malcolm tells him that he's um, he he's he's a sinner. He's done this. He's done that. He's a murderer. Like he says all these horrible things. And and Macduff finally says, you know, you have no moral compass. And so therefore you cannot be our king, you know, you cannot lead us. And I think there's something just incredibly, like you said, that yin and yang. I mean, these two guys come from the, they're both warriors, they're both uh, fighters, um, men of this era, but um, there's something about Macduff that, that, um, that fragility I think is okay to show and that, that uh, there's another side to him, to these warriors, to these career, you know, uh, war. So anyways, I, I, I think it's, it was just something to highlight and, and we just kept playing with it and like dialing it in and dialing it up and, you know, seeing how, how far we could go, you know, to this end and that end. And it was just, uh, I think we found a, a, a good, a good balance because ultimately they meet and, and what ends up winning out is, is, is good. You know, the good end, ends up always um, coming out on top. Thank you so much. Okay, Corey, now that you done one Christmas. Um, <laughs> or now you, what? What'd you say? Now that you done one Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there something you can share that you were dying to discuss with um, Genzel about the craft that you got to get an answer to? Um, uh, we, we had a lot of, we had a lot of um, conversation. I've known him before this. So we, we've spoken um, just in terms of the work and and process and craft uh for you know prior to getting the opportunity to work together um so for me this was just an experiment in finally you know being there and, and watching him lead by example and all i can say is like you know we all know his work you know and we all know but to 
to watch what goes into that process, to watch somebody at, at his career, he, he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't have to do it. He's, he, he could stop today. He won't, by the way, he'll tell you that firsthand. He could stop today and, and, and will still be lauded as one of the greatest actors, uh, artists of our time. Um, but I got to know the man, like I, that's, that's what was more important for me was just that he's in a place now where I think he is, is, um, is mentoring and sort of passing the baton. And, um, it's crazy because people are like, you know, you feel like he's, you know, passing the baton and I'm like, Denzel been passing the baton since, you know, great debaters to, to journey and, and Denzel Whitaker and Nate, and, you know, he's passing the baton. He passed it to Chadwick with Howard and, and, and Michael B and Shantae and, and, and his son. And you know what I mean? And, and now me and Moses are here and he's, you know, sort of continuing to, there's many batons to pass, you know what I mean? And, and I, and I just love that um, he's now in a place that he's able to do that. I mean, he's a spiritual man and I'm a spiritual man. And um, and just to be able to sit with him and, and talk about that, not to get into the details of what we talk about, but, you know, I, and then on the work side, just, you know, show up. He was there before everybody, 4 a.m. in the morning. You know, he was the first one on set and the last one to leave. And that's dedication. Even on days when he wasn't working, he was there my first day of shooting. He wasn't working. You know, he, he's curious. And I just hope to continue to take that curiosity uh into whatever i do next um because i'm just inspired you know to be able to work with him and fran and and uh and joel and watch these people who like i said they don't have anything they don't have to uh uh they don't have to continue to keep pushing the boundaries of this art form they don't have to do that but they're willing to risk and fail just for to see what happens if we put this piece of art out there if we you know ask this question with it if we do it in black and white here what does that say if we cast these people what does this say if we you know um do this version of the adaptation and if it's just all uh incredibly freeing to watch because i i hope to have a as long of, of a career and as um uh, bless the career as, as he has and and I, I say i'm walking in his his path, I could never hope to fill his shoes. Well, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your performance was literally magnificent. Thank we you. appreciate your work. We appreciate being a part of the experience of watching you grow as uh, as a thespian, you know, thank and you. as a leader within our community and also the largest space. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film critics, we thank you for your time. We wish you a wonderful and safe holiday season. And we thank you for watching AFCA Roundtables. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much.